Okay, welcome. Uh, this is the Data at Arms channel. Uh, we're here and uh, I'm talking with my good friend and my guest today, uh, Maria Fernanda, better known by her fanfic name, Maria Dos Lunas. Welcome, Maria. Hi, I'm so happy to be here. Yeah, and so how are to you? To talk today? about our, uh, well, just willing to talk about our favorite topic, which is Motu. <laughs> yes. Absolutely. Yeah. So just just to briefly share, we'll go over just kind of a quick personal history for the, for the two of us um, about our history experiences with Masters of the Universe. Uh, so if you'd like to go first. Okay. Well, my first exposure to Motu was last year with Revelation. Now, of course not. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a long, long time fan. Uh, I was, uh, I, I watched it growing up. I was a little girl, and, and I'd watched the filmation um, series, and back in the day, and it stuck with me. I mean, it was uh, one of my favorite shows growing up, and um, well. I remember that I didn't have the figures. I didn't have any of the collectibles, but my neighbor did. And what he did, he had this uh, amazing collection. He had every every figure that was coming out. And he would buy uh, Evelyn and Tila so that I could play along. And so uh, it's it's tied to very nice memories of my childhood. Maybe that's why it stuck with mm -hmm. me. Um, yeah. That was for me. And what about for you? So for me, my... Uh kind of the same thing i've been i've been a fan for as far back as i remember my earliest memories of masters of the universe actually go back to before the filmation cartoon with the uh there's a, a brand of storybooks called golden books and they had a lot of different masters of the universe themed storybooks um for kids and i remember there's this craft store in town craft slash bookstore in town that my mom would always take me to when I was little. And I guess to keep me busy, she would buy me a new Masters of the Universe storybook to read while she did her shopping. Um, eventually, those storybooks came out with a VHS tape that had very limited animation and a narration and voice acting for the storybooks that you could kind of read along with. And I remember just watching that constantly just over and over again. And then at some point, my mom started buying me the, the toys. And then I found the Filmation cartoon. The rest and is history. And you've been. <laughs> the rest is history. I've been, I've been hooked. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so it's been, it's been my longest standing fandom for my life. Yeah. You know, we all have other fandoms, but Masters of the Universe is definitely my top one. Yeah, same for me. Same for me. I mean, uh, I remember maybe um, the Filmation series aired later here in Mexico. I'm not sure. I would have to look it up. But I, I think that we were conscious about this series uh, in um, in '85 because that's that's when my brother, my little brother, was born. So I have like that time frame. I think it was a bit later mm -hmm. than it, it aired in in the USA, uh, but it was a generational thing. Back in the day, there were not as many options for us to watch. So every kid would watch the same show and we watched uh, Masters of the Universe. And uh, and I remember when the, when the movie later came out, when it was like the introduction for She-Ra, it mm -hmm. was a big event. I mean, all the all the kids in the neighborhood. We uh, we were there together for the premiere, and it was a big event. So it was an ongoing thing for a few years after it, it hit the, the the air in in Mexico. So yeah, yeah and it, it stuck with us. I mean, it's, it's huge in Mexico. Uh, the the fandom is is um, is very very big, as you as you know. Yeah. And so I think that that's, you know, one of the main reasons I wanted to chat with you uh, is because of, of that aspect. You know, a lot of U.S. fans don't tend to realize that Masters of the Universe is a global fandom. 
and you know like you said in mexico and other countries there are so many fans worldwide and so i i appreciate you being willing to come on here and share share your thoughts and experiences and insights on on something that we both love and uh if you don't mind real quickly let's talk about you know how how you and i met i think it was what just over a year ago yes maybe yeah yeah just over a year ago when revelation first aired uh we were both part of the same facebook fan groups and we just kind of started talking and became very fast very fast friends yes because i remember that i started noticing that uh, when when i said something you you were very supportive of my ideas we had like very similar ideas about how we perceive mm -hmm. the characters especially when revelation first aired uh there was a lot of controversy uh, people uh, some people really liked it some other were very against it and it was um i think when you um see a new a new um a new iteration let's say of uh, a franchise that you love you have very high expect expectations and mine were met i mean i was i, I enjoy the show the especially the, the this happened with the first part and and I saw that you had very similar ideas and we started interacting in the comment section. And, mm -hmm. and then uh, like little by little, we were like, oh, we have very similar ideas and we were very supportive uh, of the post we were making because you were making posts, mm -hmm. uh, so was I. And, and that's how we, we really connected over this topic, right? And, and, and we find that we have very similar ideas, not only about um, a specific topic, but about the lore, about the, the Motu lore. And I have learned a lot from you because you know, you know a lot uh, about uh, Masters of the Universe and other uh, uh, fans have access to, to a lot of materials that I, I, I didn't. And I've been learning, um, through the interaction in the Facebook groups, especially. Yeah, it's yeah. very nice. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's it's been great. And like you said, you know, we just, we found that quick connection because we did agree on so many, so many of the themes and so many of the ideas that Master of the Universe presents and that Revelation, you know, highlighted. Uh, one topic in particular that you and I both love is the portrayal of Adam and Tila and their relationship and their, their love story. You know, I think that's easily the the thing we connect about the most, and we talk about the most. <laughs> uh, but we'll, we'll we'll save that for another for another day, because that that's an entire episode in in and of itself, and I look forward to that day. Yes, yes, we have to talk about that uh, specific topic. But then I remember yes. one of the first things when I said like this guy is really cool is you had this picture of your wedding cake and the top was adam and tila and i was like how perfect is that I mean, <laughs> that's so cute that's so so great and you had this 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 beautiful picture with your lovely wife and you were both um cutting the cake and i and i was like how how beautiful it is that you can share this this stuff with your spouse, right? That is, that, that was very nice. I mean, that was a, a great detail. And I was, uh, I think oh. I commented instantly about it. Oh, I love your, <laughs> your profile picture with your cake. <laughs> I think that yeah. was one of the first comments I, I, I made. And, you know, oddly enough, uh, because we were talking about how uh, Motu is very big in many, many parts of the world. Well, my husband was, uh, was born in Latvia, so it, it was uh, in Soviet times. So there was no Motu there. He, he didn't grow up a fan at all. The first contact he had with Motu was through my fan fiction. That was the first uh, thing he ever heard about uh, Masters of the Universe. And uh, he, it, he's, he's grown to like it more and more because I think he sees my enthusiasm. He's very supportive. But it's funny to, to think that something that we grew up with, 
and that was uh, such a big part of a childhood did not happen for everyone right and mm -hmm. to me that's very funny that that it's um it's something um remarkable how you can come to a fandom uh later right and yeah and he's he now he's uh he's very supportive of of my activity in the fandom yeah yeah and it's great you know it's great to find you know for the two of us uh to be able to find partners that appreciate what we enjoy and like you said support it and that is something special to me so yeah. <laughs> but i'm glad i'm glad, you know just another little connection that we share and i love yeah. it um so uh Real briefly, uh, and we can talk about this later towards the end of the, the broadcast, but I want you to be able to kind of tell people a little bit more about yourself and um, how how you interact with this fandom through your fan fiction. Um, you've done you've done interviews. Uh, would you yep. mind just kind of talking yeah. a little bit about that and about yourself? Sure, sure. Well, um, I. Um... A few years ago, back in 2015, 2016, um, I had a, a, a very tough time. <laughs> it was this winter when I was going through some personal stuff. And I don't know why, um, but I kept coming to these scenes in about Masters of the Universe. And, and I, I needed a creative outlet. And this fanfic was creating, was like, happening before my eyes and it, it was these scenes kept playing in my mind so i had to to write them down write them down and i found such a great pleasure in just the the creativity and and i kept going i had not planned to to show them to anyone i was very self-conscious and shy about it uh, but then I, I, I showed it to my husband <laughs> and he said, like, you have to, you have to publish it. You have to share it with other fans that might enjoy it. So I did. And that was such a positive, uh, experience for me. And it helped me, um, you know, um, break through because I, I also have, uh, my own, um, original stories. And I had already finished a novel, but I had not published it because I was so afraid of criticism. So uh, with the relative um, anonymity of a fanfic or name, I had like this layer of protection. So yeah. it really, it really helped me uh, break through that uh, shyness and, um, and fear of criticism. And I, I had a, a lovely response about it. And, then I created another fan fiction, but I was not active on, on Facebook uh, groups at all, only on, on fan fiction. That was the platform that I was using. And, and then a few years later, I learned that there was revelation coming to Netflix and that really like sparked <laughs> a new wave of, of, um, of joy, of fandom joy. And that's when I, went to to facebook to to look for groups and that's when i started interacting with other fans and and seeing all this um all the controversy that happened and i had my own ideas about that so i started sharing what i knew and and what i saw right because we we have different ways to interpret the same to interpret the same thing, and I thought mm -hmm. that I might share my my view, and maybe other people will uh, find it interesting. And, and and it happened that way, and and I always try to be supportive of other fans and answer questions when I can in a in a polite way, and that's how I I I came back to the fandom, so to speak, because. Um, back in the day, well, the fandom was with your neighbors. We didn't have the ability to connect with so many people from other, uh, other countries as we do now. Mm -hmm. So I think it's a wonderful thing that we can, then we have available now that we didn't back in the eighties. 
Yeah. And, and, and so many people connect with, with this franchise through different ways, you know, like you write fan fictions, uh, people do fan art. There's so many beautiful examples of fan art that people do out there from so many talented people. Um, and I think one of the main things is what we're going to be talking about today is, you know, customization of toys and action figures. And that's something that I think, at, at least for me, I don't want to, I don't want to speak for you, but that's something that I've just picked up recently, mm -hmm. you know, um, I've started doing it more in my spare time when I'm not busy with, with, you know, work and family responsibilities. And it's something that, that I find enjoyment in, in that way. I, I think that's um, the, the, the biggest part of going back to a fandom, reconnecting with, reconnecting with your joy, with what brings joy to your life. Um, I think um, going back to this fandom hit me hard, especially because it was during the pandemic and we were like, we need to find uh, ways to, to enjoy life where we are. And this was uh, a big, big thing for me. And I had already been active in another fandom, in an anime fandom. I'm only active in two. And, but then when, as I said, when Revelation was announced, an instant uh, feeling of connection with this franchise was lit up again. And that's why yeah. I came <laughs> running back to the fandom. Yes. And it's been an exciting time. It feels like we're in a, in kind of a renaissance of Masters of the Universe. You know, we True. have three, three, three current toy lines with the, uh, the Origins toy line, the Masters toy line, and the CGI series toy line. Uh, we have the two new shows on on Netflix with Revelation and hopefully soon Revolution. And then we have the CGI series, which is more kind of more of a reboot for a new generation of kids to come into this fandom. And there's, you know, the live action movie that's being that's in production right now for for Netflix as well. Yeah, so I'm really, really excited. Time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, it feel it feels like being a kid again. And True. It is a great time to be a Moto fan. We have so many merchandising coming, and, and yeah. just toy lines and posters, and pretty much like it was in the eighties. I don't think that uh, in two thousand and two and two thousand and three, when we had that other reboot of uh, Masters mm -hmm. of the Universe, there wasn't so much, uh, um, or there wasn't such a big response from fans as there is now. Right. Maybe, maybe I think it's due to the age. Uh, in those years, we were going through college. Most of the fans, the original fans, we were going through college and responsibilities and our first jobs. And we didn't have that much um, time. Well, we don't have <laughs> that much time now, but we had like so yeah. much going on, sorting out in our, in our own lives that we didn't have the, the, the mind space to to go back so 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 much to that i mean i mm -hmm. I, I i don't think i even watched the series in 2002 i watched it much later when i was creating my fan fiction i went back to those because there was uh talk of more um information going on in that series than there was information so like complementary information and i wanted to watch those that's when i watched it not when it first aired and now when i heard the news well i was like <laughs> i uh, i was immediately hooked back into the fandom i don't know how it was for you yeah so i think i think you're right i'm um, back 2002 to 2003 era of masters of the universe that reboot uh there wasn't as big of a push with the toy line uh toys were fairly scarce i remember seeing them in stores but it was always the same he-man and skeletal figures uh it was really hard to find the supporting characters um i think another contributor to that was the ease of access you know today we have streaming services where we can you know jump on netflix and instantly watch these new series but back then the the series the 2000 series was aired on cartoon network um in the us i don't know how it was in mexico but it was aired 
on the Cartoon Network. I think Network. so. I think, yeah. Was, yeah. 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 Okay. And it was, and it was only specific time, time slots that you could watch the show, you know? And so, yeah, like you said, we'd be at work, we'd be at school, we'd be doing all these different things and we just didn't have that access to it. And I, I, I think that's a big contributing factor to, to how that series, you know, eventually, despite being a very good series, it was eventually canceled just because there wasn't interest in it because a lot of, like you said, a lot of the fans that would connect with it were older and at a different part of their lives where they couldn't sit down and watch it consistently. Right. So it, it's a great time to be a, to be a fan again. <laughs> it feels awesome. Yeah. And I, um, I can find a, a t-shirt. I finally found a t-shirt. I don't, I think it, it can be seen then, but I, I found my t-shirt. It there was, it is. <laughs> I, it, it's, and you found it's that in thing. stores. I, I found it in stores in Mexico because I, um, at first I didn't know if the figures will be available in Mexico. They actually were a, ma a master wear line. Uh, the first time I saw them in the wild in Mexico where I live was, uh, early October and it had been going on since early spring, right? So mm -hmm. a good six months later. And well, of course you can always order online, but that comes with a higher cost. So I didn't know if I, I would find them here. And the first time I saw this human figure figure and this master human, and I, I, I could see it like, really close i have it here and it was beautiful i mean the aesthetic <laughs> is fantastic and i had to have it right i wasn't going to collect but <laughs> it could it got me hooked right <laughs> <laughs> you see it on the shelf and it just jumps out at you right and it's such it's it's such an incredible feeling to be able to see these this piece of our childhood brought back so i think that's very special uh, you know, I think, I think that brings us to the focus of our conversation today. Let's start talking about action figure and toy customization. Yes. So what, I, I, I guess let's briefly talk about what customization is, what, you know, I think there's many, many different aspects of it. Uh, we see it in, you know, there, there's simple, simple repaints of of action figures where people will you know just add different colors or different details through painting and to highlight you know different aspects of the the toy sculpt uh just little improvements that they like to make to fit their personal taste i think you know that's kind of the first the first way that people kind of dip their toes into customization is through painting yeah metallic painting metallic detailing mm -hmm. it's one of the most prevalent you want, that the, I've you, seen. You want those shiny swords yeah 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 uh an another way people do it is through kit bashing uh which is when people will reconstitute parts from other action figures uh other action figure lines to again enhance the existing figure that they're working on um another way to do it is you see you see a lot of people now that do full scale, you know, production of parts and, and, you know, like head sculpts or weapons or articles of clothing. They do it through 3D printing. They can do it through, you know, traditional. Sculpting. Yeah, sculpting, <laughs> like with clay sculpting. Uh, they do it through sewing, you know, where they, they'll, they'll sew like capes and, and what they call soft goods materials for their action figures. Uh, and I just think it's incredible the amount of talent that people have. Uh, right. I've seen, kind of I've seen very impressive things. I mean, crochet, it's another way. I've seen Masters of the Universe figures, a skeleton that is an amigurumi. And they're beautiful. And, it, and there's an, an incredible, incredible amount of work and thought put into that. You have to create the patterns from scratch because those are not like commercially available you have to create from scratch from a different complete uh, different media even not, not if that's not plastic mm -hmm. or even like plush yeah. figures like sewing not not, yes. not only adding clothing uh, items but making like uh 
plush uh, figures. Is that, is that the name? I mean, like yeah, yeah, like little pl- like like plush dolls. You know? Exactly. And yeah. I I I am very I'm drawn to that part even more because I'm more crafty and uh, but I also mm-hmm. love the way that just <laughs> sorry uh, altering an, a pre-existing figure really brings out a unique touch that it's given there by the fan it helps you yeah. contribute to the franchise with your own vision I think that's why mm-hmm. uh, it's uh, <laughs> so popular you know when um, there is um, there is something that the generic figure or the, the generic line is not uh, is not giving you, and you can contribute with your own personal vision. I think that's yeah. that's why it is so popular, and it's so much fun. It's so much fun. Just just to watch and what other really... people are doing and do it yourself. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. You know, and I think I think it really taps into the whole spirit of what masters of the universe is you know these toys are created for people to let their imaginations you know run wild and it it helps them you know tap tap into that imaginative side of them and and bring their own stories to life that's always been a central tenet of of masters of the universe uh, specifically with the toy lines um and i mean that's how the whole franchise started was with toys and and then they built a story around that and, and so to see people using their imagination and using their creativity and their skills to make their own figures, to enhance existing figures, to come up with completely new figures, um, and then to take that further, like you said, with plush dolls and soft goods, crochet projects and and all kinds of things. I've seen just on the recently with the Facebook groups, I've seen a crocheted Orco doll and he's the cutest thing I've ever seen. You know, he's adorable, you know, and you just, I don't know, every, every time I see somebody share something on, on the groups that we participate in, it always just makes me, it always makes me smile, you know, cause it's a, you're, it's a different way fans. to play. It's a different yeah. way to play. I mean, uh, to use your imagination and add things to, to the to figures that the thing that you were saying, uh, the toy land was built for kids to feel like they had the power and now as we go up mm-hmm. we still have that playful side to ourselves maybe it, it can express in a different way but it's still there and i think that i don't know maybe it's the age or i don't know why <laughs> but we're we're experiencing this need of of being playful again and enjoying the life that we have and playing with our toys in a different way and customizing I think it's a it's a new way to play in the same way that taking pictures is like playing yeah. with your your toys in, in in a different way that you did when you were a child, but still uh, using your imagination and, and that's lovely. I think that's, that's a very nice uh, sub product of uh, having this franchise active again. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's wonderful, and and you see so many times when people post about these things, one of the common, I, I guess, one of the common phrases that they they say is that you know it makes them feel like a kid again. To you know to be participating in in this fandom the way that they do, whether it's through fan fiction, whether it's through fan art, whether it's through you know creating action figures and and dolls and you know, so many different things. And it's lovely. And I think one of the things that I was very excited about when I learned that uh, Revelation was coming up is that it would inevitably make people go back to being creative. And I was like, yeah, there's going to be more fan arts. There's going to be more fan fiction. Yeah. There's going to be more customization and pictures. So I was not only uh, waiting for a the, the series to, to air, but also uh, what the fans would make of it, right? That, I was really waiting for those things, right? <laughs> <laughs> here comes Tila, here comes Tila. Los voy a enseñar después. I'm back, 
you know, it's just it it's just that wonderful aspect of tapping into to creativity and and what we love about about this franchise. And it's a special time right now. And like you said, we're, you know, because of the new series, it's it's in people's minds. And so people are creating more and people are are showing their talents more. And I'm always I'm always happy to see that. I'm always happy to see what people can come up with. Yeah, and th this happens um, uh, across all fandoms that are centered uh, around uh, toys, toy lines, right? Mm -hmm. Like, like yeah. I think um, there is something there is something missing, not not in a negative way, but there is something that. Uh, well, a toyland cannot fill all the gaps, all the all the possibilities that a franchise has, and that's when the fans come in and fill it with their own uh, vision. I would say. Yeah, yeah. When it, it it like you said, it's not it's not that there's something missing in a negative light, but like like with me, for example, I get excited about what figures might be coming out down the line. You know, and I'm like, well, I want that figure now. I want this character now. So they don't, it's not available to buy yet. So why don't I'll make my own, you know? And I think it's just, it's just fun. <laughs> yeah. For example, or, or um, when the, the wait is so long, <laughs> for mm -hmm. example, with the Adam figure, it's just, I mean, it's a, it's a year and a half later that we start to hear the rumors that it's finally coming out. I've been waiting for that figure for a long while. <laughs> so, <laughs> and I and I remember that you made uh, a custom Adam. I really liked yes, uh, yes. the the one that you did, and you shared in the groups. And everybody was asking what what parts you were using from from a different toy line. I think yeah. ah, it's there. You have it there. I have it right here for you. Yeah. I don't know if you can see that too well. It turned out very well. I mean, very, it looks like Adam from Revelation. Yeah, and so you know, this is this is this is basically an example of kind of everything we've talked about with uh, you know, painting and kit ashing to to get the desired effect. You know, I use pieces from Star Wars action figures. I use pieces from Fortnite action figures. Uh, this was actually the first figure I ever painted, and you, I'm glad my camera isn't too high quality because you can see i mean you see a little a few scuffs Stretches. and things like that just from yeah just from paint and imperfections and things like that but i mean overall it's i'm pretty satisfied with it yeah it, it turned out pretty pretty much like the figure that you were trying to to replicate from the series so yeah yeah i i, I was pleased with it and, mo and most importantly it was fun it was fun to do and and I think that's I think that's the point point of it all. Yeah, and so it, it it allows a personal interpretation of the of the characters or aspects of the characters. I think what's happening with with Masterverse is that we're getting a lot of versions of the same character, which uh, I don't know mm -hmm. if it happened with the. With the original line, I think it, to some degree, but only with Skeletor and with He-Man. But yeah. not yeah. many other characters had so many variants as, as we are getting right. now. I I'm not very familiar with the classics line, which I think it's a very uh, it's a favorite of of, of this fandom. Uh, mm -hmm. when, when did that appear? Classics? I don't remember. So so classics began in. The 2000, I believe it was 2008, is when the first oh. figures started a, started being made available for purchase, and it ran for for quite a few years. I think it ran all the way up to 2016. I want to say, well, so almost, almost almost ten years. Eight. Yeah, so it, it was pretty close to that. And and my my dates might be wrong, but I'm trying to think. I think the last the last classics figure was the Horde Zombie Slime Pit He Man. And that was a mm. that was a convention exclusive, but I think that was 2016, if my memory serves me right. Um, 
but yeah, that was that was it was a, an attempt by Mattel to you know, revi revitalize the franchise with with new toys, and the toys were largely based on vintage figures, but with updated articulation and you know modern action Head figure sculpts. technology applied to it. Yeah, and head yeah. sculpts. The, the, I think the, the the head sculpts are remarkably good from that mm -hmm. toy line. Yeah, 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 definitely. I have a bunch of them up here, you know, on my shelves behind me of the classics line. Uh, but yeah, very good head sculpts. Uh, kind of limited articulation because it was more of a, a designer toy uh, where it focused more on the looks rather than the playability. Yeah, for collectors. Um, that that was uh, basically for collectors, which is something yeah. that I really like about Masterverse. That uh, at first I thought they were going to be like very fragile when I saw them, but no, they, you, I mean, maybe not for a toddler but for some uh young kids like six seven eight they can play very well with them i mm -hmm. uh, i play with them with my with my little girl and the first thing that that my girl did when she, when i unboxed uh tila <laughs> was she hold, she held it in her hand and said queen tila charge that was the first <laughs> thing she said that was adorable and <laughs> and now she she recognizes a lot of the characters and it's very nice to, to see that uh, our kids like are connecting with this franchise. Maybe not in the same way that well, that we do, but it's creating also memories for them. I love that I can play with these figures with with my little my little girl. That's something that I did not yeah. expect, and it was a very nice aspect of it. Yeah, yeah, I think that's great. Uh with my kids, my boys are a little bit older. Uh, one of them basically just rolls his eyes every time I talk about He-Man and Masters of the Universe. The younger one, he's more into it, and he's he's more receptive and excited about you know playing with the toys. And uh, but yeah, but it's it, it's just the, another way to to pass on our love for the franchise, you know and. You know that's that's how new fans are are made in every every fandom is you know they come into yeah. it on their own you know on their own level of understanding and it's great yeah and i love i love that uh there are a few uh customizations that i've seen in the groups that are made by younger fans and and i love those I mean that mm -hmm. they they create uh, uh, very special head sculpts and detailing, and and I'm amazed that that this franchise is not only uh, relevant for people who like us who grew up with this, but it's attracting new 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 audiences and well helping them create something. And I I always loved. Uh, when I see new fans sharing their projects, that's something that I enjoy very much. Yeah, it's always it's always a good special feeling because you just you feel that love coming from them, and it makes it yeah, it's great. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, other other aspects of customization are people, you know, want there there's a there's different size of of toys and figures that people like to make. I've seen people make, uh, what is it? The one, one six scale, which are the, the larger scaled figures. Uh, people make there, there, there's the current Mondo. Mondo does the current one six scale mass of the universe action figures, but mm -hmm. I've seen so many people make their own, their own versions based on those figures that fit right in. Like I've seen people make their own Prince Adams. Um, I've seen people make, make their own evil in, um, haven't seen I haven't seen anybody make a Tila yet, but I mean people people are making stuff every day to fit in with their particular niche of collections, you know, and and I think that's why I think that's another reason why customization speaks to people is because they're able to to do something to enhance their enjoyment of of the franchise, right? And I think that's something that that it's shared with fan art and fan fiction that you get to yeah. complete or to add something that you do not see in what's available readily available mm -hmm. 
I, that, I think that's why I wrote two fan fictions about Masters of the Universe, because there were aspects of the, the story that I wanted to explore. I am very open about it. It's, it's about the relationship, the romantic relationship between Adam and Tila. And mm -hmm. I was uh, surprised and happy to see that in Revelation, that was an aspect that was touched upon. I mean, it was clearly something advancing there. And there were many aspects that were not present in the um, filmation, which is like the, the thing that we know most, most that was mm -hmm. more available, more widely available. I know that it is uh, very clearly stated in, in some comic series, but it's not something mm -hmm. that an average fan knows. I mean, I've been learning about this, those things as I came back to the fandom and being in contact with these pre-existing materials. But I love that in Revelation, that was some aspect that was explored. And I hope that they can, they, they further that um, subplot, uh, romantic subplot in, in, in what's coming next let's hope soon <laughs> yeah i mean that that that's what we're waiting for right <laughs> yeah. we're waiting we're waiting to see we're waiting to see <laughs> the fruition of that of that relationship you and i personally that's what you and i are waiting for yeah so. <laughs> and we're very and, open and about I it i we took a lot yeah, of yeah. of uh uh, we, we took a lot of I don't know what to say that how to say this in in English. We but, uh, yeah we 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 took a lot of we took a lot of heat. For, yeah, we took a lot of heat for ship for, for shipping the aspect. canon. Yeah, for shipping yeah. Adam and Tila, and, and yeah. I was very surprised. I mean, and at some point I started like doubting that because some people were very vocal about saying no that they they were never meant to be a couple. That's not something that was played out. And I was like, okay, I remember seeing these hints here and there. I haven't rewatched the series in a long while, but I remember that that aspect stuck with me. And I don't understand why other people are like so ob oblivious to it or yeah. so against it. And but no, when I was when I have been revisiting all these materials, yeah, it's definitely there. It's definitely there. And I even made a poll. I don't know if you remember this, like a year ago <laughs> before before part two <laughs> aired. I made a poll. Would you like to see Adam and Tila in a in a relationship? Like that this is explicitly made uh, clear that they are a couple. Do you want to see it or no? You simply don't care. And I thought that maybe a fraction of the fandom would be like me, like, yeah, I want them to be together and the other would not just care about that because um, that's how it, that's how we were told that this was created, that this was for, for mainly for boys. And so romance right. was, should be left out. That's what people <laughs> kept saying, but no, it turned out like two thirds of the fandom uh, from this, uh, this big group that I posted the poll, like two thirds of the fandom were like, yeah, I want to see that play out. That was a big surprise for me. I thought I was one of the few romantics. Turns out I am not <laughs> one of the few romantics yeah, I, there. I, 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 there's a lot of us. We're out there. <laughs> we exist. <Yeah. laughs> and we could connect through well, you know, these groups. You're right. Exactly, exactly. And you find the people that that also share that passion for for that specific aspect of Masters mm -hmm. of the Universe. And you kind of, you know, like you and I, you kind of naturally pivot towards those kind of fans that share share those interests, you know, of, you know, what you want to see from the franchise. Yes, and, you know, and it's and nice. Like you said. Uh, go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead. It, it, well, I was just going to say, you know, uh, when we were younger and we're watching these things, I think you and I have talked about this before, but we both kind of had that natural inclination towards, yes, He-Man and Tila, there's something, there's a romantic, you know, spark between them, you know, and, and now as we're older and you see, you, you know, you see people talking about how, oh no, that's not, that was never a part of it. They were never meant to be together. But you go back and there's there's filmation episodes that very explicitly show the affection that that is between them. You know, you go back to even way back, 
with the original comics in the 80s you know there's many comics there's there's the comics that were published by dc and by marvel under the star publication um that very very explicitly go into well not explicitly in that sense but very um clear there's evidence there's there's very solid clear thank you it very clearly highlights that 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 relationship is present um i think even i think it was the newspaper strips that we actually see the first kiss between he-man and tila and it's her and was, who kisses who kisses him oh, yeah. she's yeah, she really into him <laughs> 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 and you know and, maybe, and that was and that goes all the way back to the 80s right and i was like yeah so i was not imagining things so it's been very yeah. nice to to see that there is a lot of material <laughs> this is not the only thing <laughs> that is prevalent in in, in motu of course no, and it's no. not, maybe not the the main but it is an important part and that's and it's something that i enjoy personally and like i said i was surprised that many other fans I could objectively say the majority of fans would like to see play out. Maybe not, it's not, it's yeah. not going to turn into a telenovela. Of course, that's not what I mean, <laughs> but, uh, or, or, uh, or a romance. It's not going to turn into that, but that subplot is interesting to, to many of us fans. And yeah. you know what, maybe I'm, I'm, um, uh, I'm getting ahead, but I have to share this, you know, maybe we can expand on this, on this theme later. But I think that the reason that Prince Adam was created, because it's an edit, right? It was created as a device to keep Tila and Heman apart. Because like we, like we talked a little earlier uh, in the earlier comics, it was, it's very evident that they are attracted to each other and there is no no real reason for them to be apart. I mean, she's attracted to him, he's attracted to her. There are even some uh, frames, some storylines in which they are clearly on a date. They're in a romantic mm. picnic and then the bad guys interrupt them. And, 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 and she gets very defensive of the most powerful man in the universe. That's something that I find very, <laughs> really funny. Like you, you will pay if you are, uh, uh, menacing my man and it's like <laughs> yeah yep. like this she, immedi the most... she immediately go she immediately goes into kill mode <laughs> yeah she's very protective of he-man which is something mm. very 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 cute <laughs> if you ask me yeah. <laughs> because like she's a warrior yeah. woman but she also has this uh, sweet side of her in, in, when she's very protective of of he-man of yeah. all people right and so there is no so there is no real reason for for them to be apart and when mm -hmm. you create a um, secret identity then you have a built-in conflict that makes sense that really yeah. uh that now he has a reason to be secretive and to keep her to keep her at, uh, uh away from him because there's a secret um, going yeah. in and I think it was a very very good way not only to create conflict in in this part but also to create other storylines right now that he's right. a prince he's secretly a prince then you have a kingdom you have uh, King Brander and Queen Marlena and they and then you expand on it and and part of the explanation uh, as to why uh, he is such a powerhouse is that <laughs> not only that he has the power of Brayskull, but also that he has uh, a mother from Earth. I've heard that this mm -hmm. is also a factor. And it makes the, the entire uh, franchise more interesting. And then you have this jealous uh, uncle and that was a, a storyline that that was creator created more recently, like in the two thousands, mm -hmm. maybe. Yeah, yeah. So that that was created. Well, well, Keldor was created for the two thousand series, but they didn't make him the brother of King Randor until a few years later with the uh, the two thousand twelve. Yeah, the two thousand twelve to two thousand sixteen comics run. They made him the brother, so they kind of created that that classic hamlet style storyline aspect uh -huh. that they brought yes in. yeah 
So and, and it all happens because you have this uh, origin story in which he's a prince and he secretly holds the power and mm -hmm. you instantly make it more interesting and, and there's a lot of room to play and it's been used you know and yeah. over the years yeah. not just not not at the creation moment but that the, the seed was planted then so i think that's why prince adam it's such an interesting character and it's my favorite to this day yeah yeah and you know like you said like by creating the prince adam character it allows for for more storytelling options and it allows these characters to be explored at a deeper level you know so now because he man is really prince adam he's not just a barbarian warrior you know no he has i guess a softer side to him you know he has this entire personality built around him where he man is his hero form and prince adam is his natural form and he deals with issues you know he deals with issues of his father being disappointed in him for not you know for not living up to expectations he has his bodyguard with tila who protects him but she's also frustrated because he has to pretend that he's lazy and cowardly you know in order to keep in order to keep this secret active you know and so you get to see that frustration that that Tila has, you know, when she interacts with Adam and, and in her mind, she, she has affection for these two characters in both Prince Adam and He-Man. And she's trying to reconcile that in her mind. You know, she's like, well, I like aspects of both of them, you know, is, the, you know, I think it's in the filmation series where she actually says, you know, where does such a man exist that possesses both, both qualities? You know, surprise, so you, he's, yeah, he's right there. <laughs> He's right in front of you. But the reason for the secret identity is, you know, it, it, it's a very common theme with comics and secret identities. You know, you have Superman and Clark Kent. You have Batman and Bruce Wayne. Uh, the reason for their identities is to specifically protect the people that they love. Right? And so with Prince Adam, you get to explore those aspects. You know, okay, well, who does Prince Adam love? It's his father. It's his mother. It's his close friends. It's his childhood friend that eventually becomes his love interest, you know? It's all of these different aspects that you get to explore by creating one character. Right, and, and also, I, I, like you said, uh, he stops being just a barbarian. And mm -hmm. I think it was a smart move from a, from a business point of view, from an IP point of view, in which you make it different from Conan, which is a very, very clear in the, source of inspiration for him and, and other other characters like that or mm -hmm. other movies i i remember fire and ice and yeah. well it's pretty much a barbaric hero right and mm -hmm. now he's not only this uh glorified oh, uh, very super powered uh, barbarian but there is another layer of uh, uh complexity to the storyline and and it makes a distinctive ip right right yeah and yeah, i think that's what makes it it makes it special it makes it its own thing and mm -hmm. makes it last that i think that's one of the keys of of the longevity of this franchise is that it has uh its unique thing it explores common tropes like the secret identity, um, the this sci-fi, but also like kind of medieval Renaissance feeling to it. But it's but the combination it makes it very unique, and I think that's why it's it's stuck with us so so powerfully. Yeah, yeah, and you know it's just it's neat to see. It, it, it reminds me of uh, the classic uh, Lord of the Rings type of thematics where you have, you know, what J.R.R. Tolkien wrote a lot about and what he really focused on was that heroism comes from the smallest things. You know, the smallest beings can still be heroes. And, and that was his whole point of creating the hobbits. And the reason that Frodo and Sam are the ones to, you know, deliver. Destroy. Yeah, to destroy the ring. You know, it's the, the smallest and most insignificant characters 
that are the biggest heroes. And I think that's the weakest. very well. The weakest. Yeah. You know, the ones that people overlook because they don't think that they're capable, you know, and I think, I think that's what Masters of the Universe does very well with, with the character of Prince Adam. You know, you have the supposedly car- cowardly, lazy prince who in reality is the most powerful man in the universe. And he makes He-Man work as a hero because Prince Adam is the one that supplies the heart and the drive, you know, to be a hero. Yes, and... you want you want him to, to get the recognition that he deserves. And that's yeah. why I think I love so much Revelation yes. that this finally ha- happened on screen that everybody knows I think it's a turning point in the in the franchise and it also lets you explore more complex issues. I mean, it's the first time that the that his identity is revealed to so openly, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. And and I think you can say, well, now it changes the game. Yes, but it took it four years does. to happen. <laughs> I mean, it was about time. So yeah. We're, we're ready. We're ready to see the game changed, and we're ready to see that story progressed. You know, we've we've had multiple reboots of the same story over and over again. That the main thing I appreciated about Revelation is that it was finally advancing that storyline. You know, along different threads. You know, you get to see Adam's secret revealed. You get to see Adam and Tila's relationship explored more fully. You get to see, you know, his relationship with his father change. You know, his father finally recognizes no, my son is a hero and I was way too hard on him and I need to, I need to be accountable for my behavior and how I treated my son. And it allows for these very humanistic moments that make, you know, it, 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 it highlights the themes that we can all connect with. Yes. I think that's one of the favorite aspects also for many people, how, uh, this reconciliation, with mm-hmm. Randor and how it was him who who brings him back from, from his savage yeah. state. That was lovely. I mean it was uh, it was so meaningful and it allowed for Randor for Randor to to grow as a character and grow in importance because before I was really annoyed by the way he was treating Adam all the time. Like yeah. I wanted to have a serious talk with that character. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so I, 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 there were many things that, and exactly when the <coughs> secret is revealed, you might think, "Oh, so then the franchise, the franchise ends." No, there are other things that are needed to be explored, and mm-hmm. um, how how other people respond to that. And I, I've said this before. Uh, I think it let us know how important human really is. It made me appreciate human a lot more because without human, the world was falling apart. Eternia was falling mm-hmm. apart. And turns it out the nice. universe, the universe was also, was also falling apart, right? Mm-hmm. And so we need human. It's not just an accessory. It's not just the guy who takes out the sword and saves the day. And yeah. Like it, it, it made it more rebel, relevant to me. Yeah, it, it, it makes him the lifeblood of, of the franchise, right? He's the one that everything is connected to and that everything flows through is He-Man and his connection to the power, which is the life source of not only Eternia, but like you said, the entire universe. And without him, everything's dying. <clears throat> yeah, and it, it's, uh, it, it made it more, inst- more interesting from a storytelling point of view. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and now moving forward, we get to see, well, what happens, you know, his identity is known. What does that mean? Not only for his friends and his family, what does that mean for the villains? You know, this is a very, it's a very big revelation that Prince Adam is known as He-Man now. So how does that play out with everybody? And we, and we, we see a little bit of that with revelation, you know, we see Skeletor, you know, mocking Prince Adam, you know, for being such a weakling and, and that he had the power at his fingertips all this time and he never used it appropriately, you know, according to Skeletor's, you know, <laughs> definition of what's appropriate use of power, you know, but it'll be interesting moving forward to see how this plays out, you know, and I think 
in addition to that, you also get to see this theme explored about, you know, what happens when we keep secrets from our loved ones, you know, and that there's a price to pay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's consequences to that, you know, and we see that very clearly with with Tila's story, you know, it very nearly breaks her and, you know, it was a pretty, it was a devastating and heartbreaking thing to explore, but I think it was necessary to this franchise, you know, and ultimately what that does is through hardship, it creates greater connections and a stronger bond between our two main characters, you know, between Adam and Tila. You know, Adam realizes yes. that he was wrong in keeping this secret. And, you know, Tila also recognizes that, well, you know, maybe she was wrong to react so harshly to to Adam's decisions, you know, because at the heart of it, he wanted to protect her and he was doing the best he knew how. You know, and what he right. was told. Yeah, all exactly. the time. Like, Everybody. Yeah. I mean, Duncan and Sorceress and everyone, I, mean, I think uh, even Orko and Gringer are always mm -hmm. pushing him to keep the secret. And he yeah. clearly, in <coughs> many at some point, he's always like, "I want to, I want to tell who I, to say who I am," mm -hmm. and, but he can't. And yeah. it also it also changes the relationship uh, for the villains with the other villains, right? Mm -hmm. There suddenly uh, with with the disappearance of Skeletor, there's another power struggle who's going to take his place and in which way it's going to play out and i think that was very interesting uh yeah. the motherboard cult was something so interesting and <clears throat> and also how evelyn also wants to share the power uh in the, it also helps you uh, it it allows you to explore more complex things that had not been Explore. I think that at some point it was necessary for this to happen, but we never got to see that. So I think it yeah. was a bold decision to start with that. Let's not yeah. wait if on season 15 we can explore this. No, it's like episode it. one, it's right. there. <laughs> and that's where your, your starting point. I think that was very, yeah. uh, very bold and, and, and necessary because uh, again it, this franchise has turned 40 mm -hmm. how much are you going to wait for it to move yeah. along i mean we right? had, we had we had 130 episodes of the filmation series that did this you know we had what two two and a half seasons of the 2000 series you know where it's doing the same thing where it's drawing out these themes and this idea of a secret and is it ever going to be revealed will Adam and Tila ever get together, you know, we've been there, we've been down that road for, like you said, for 40 years, you know, and so I know a lot of people disagree with this, but Revelation made the right choice. In it was about that, time. It was get, about yeah, time. Let's, yep. Let's get right to it. So I, yeah, I'm happy with the decisions they made. <laughs> so I think this is a time that we can segue into, I think it's time to share some projects. Yes. <laughs> um, I want one. to, I want you to, I've got a few, few things you, you've seen them and I've shared them online and stuff like that <laughs> on, on, on camera here. Um, I want to know, would you prefer to reveal now or do you want to wait until I've, I've showed a couple of my examples of, of customizations? How do you want this to play out, Maria? Oh, uh, we can. Yeah, I'll wait. I'll wait. Okay. You share. You share one uh, your projects, and then I'll share mine because I don't think we have told people this, but I'm gonna show my custom projects for the first time in public. This is the first yeah. public appearance of my customs. Yes. And how <laughs> and how long have you been working on these? Well, <laughs> I started working on them. Uh, uh, a little after uh, the first part aired uh, over a year ago. And mm -hmm. like I said, I didn't know if the toy line would be available here and and I couldn't wait. <laughs> so I decided to create my own and and with a with a pre-existing materials that we'll talk a bit more a bit later. Love it. 
All right, so let me let me show off my things real quick and then and then we'll get to the main event. Okay. All right, so I think the very first this is the first custom I ever worked on and this was born from the idea of as soon as Revelation part 2 aired or no, uh, uh, when Revelation part 1 aired, I was ready to see what Tila looked like as the sorceress of Grayskull. You know, this was a common story element that had been built up since the early 80s. And it's something that fans who are aware of this franchise have been waiting for is to see Tila assume the role of, of the sorceress finally, you know? And so I started playing with ideas of how I would like to see her and, and, you know, what, what would she look like? And so I, what I did was I basically took a Tila figure, the Masper's standard Tila figure, the mercenary mm -hmm. Tila, and I started altering her. I gave her a new set of legs and I adjusted her boots and I gave her a, a, a skirt staff. piece. Yeah, I gave her the staff. I brought in her, her snake sword from the classic, you know, and the, the, both these parts are classics, you know, accessories. Um, and so that's, you know, it definitely has that, it's a kit bash, you know, custom. Um, this how I have her set up now is where she's wearing her her purple fur fur lined cape, and this is kind of her queen sorceress, you know, version. Obviously, she's become queen now, <laughs> but you know, I always wanted to see Tila in her in her snake armor from her <laughs> line, right? And so I like the idea of her becoming the sorceress and. And donning her her snake armor in animated form for the first time, and so that was kind of the idea I went with, you know. So as you can see, it's a very easy way to switch it out to add in that snake hooded armor. And you also and altered her hair, right? I did for it to yeah. fit. Mm -hmm. So her hair, her regular head sculpt with the the side shave hairstyle, it wouldn't allow for the armor to fit. And so what I did was I, I don't know if you can see that very well. So this is the. This is the standard Tila head sculpt, you know, and the only thing I did was I replaced her hair. And so the hair she has now is more of a ponytail. And so, and what that did was that allowed her, her headdress to fit over the head sculpt. And so that was really my first, my first venture into customizing was that I wanted to see Tila as the sorceress and I couldn't wait until Revelation part two aired. And so I started making a figure based on that. You know. And then a bit later, we learned that uh, from the art book, we learned that they actually explored that mm -hmm. uh, that idea of having her as um, snake goddess. Yeah, yeah. So the snake, the snake motif, the the snake motif. They yes. they explored that, and there's examples of concept art of her wearing robes and clothing that that's based on that old snake armor from the vintage toy line. And showing legs, yes. <laughs> yep, she looks adorable. Oh yeah, she's great. <laughs> so so yeah, so that was my first one. And then from there it went to, you know, the similar idea of you is that I wanted to see Prince Adam. You know, and, and we already showed Prince Adam on screen, so I won't I won't show him again. Um but because I had made Tila and I had also, you know, made the figure so that I could adapt her to be a queen. I also wanted to show show He Man as King He Man, right? And so I created that I created that figure, and this was basically just I repainted, you know, some armor pieces to kind of highlight, kind of more of the, give, give him more of a regal flair, more or less. And so he comes with a new cape. Sorry, there we go. So yeah, so he's got a very, in my opinion, very royal, kingly looking cape to go cape. with him and i gave him i gave him a new head sculpt to make him look a little bit more battle hardened you can see he's a bit older yeah a little bit out. older he's, he's got some battle damage he's kind of tired of fighting skeletor constantly <laughs> yeah but that's how how we are um told that he looks as king human like you know mm -hmm. uh, a bit more grown up or over 40 50 around 40 50 yeah. uh, and uh, and I think that's an interesting look 
And I, one of the things that I love about uh, the Masterverse line is that every human that comes out comes with a different head sculpt, but completely yes. different. Mm -hmm. And and I think that allows fans to switch, which they do. Just mm -hmm. switching the heads, the original heads. Uh, for example, this battle armor, bat battle armor, yeah. battle, yeah, but battle armor human. Nope. That head yep. sculpt is it's also uh, a bit more grown up, and I think uh, that's that's one of my favorite. You know, it, it shows uh, he, he looks very good. It's it's the the head sculpt looks very nice, mm -hmm. and it shows a different aspect of this character, and. Yeah. So you you can play around just with the with the regular pieces that this line has, and also uh, another fan favorite is the forty uh, year anniversary version mm -hmm. because it looks a lot more like the vintage one. Yeah. I have to confess, I the original figures were too like too uh, sturdy or too I don't know too bulky too bulky for for my liking i love the 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 girl the women sculpting like mm -hmm. tila and evelyn and later princesses of power i i really love those which is more like um closer to to normal um proportions while the the guys are, are massive right? <laughs> and 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 not at all uh natural right mm -hmm. but with master Bros, i like that it, the proportions are a bit more uh more cl are closer to human proportions and to me personal uh, personally that's more appealing from uh, an aesthetic point of view yes right but i understand that that this is different for everyone and a lot of people are just no i want the originals those are the, the right. best and yeah. of course they have this uh legendary um think to them that they, these were the originals this were the first that we played with the, yeah. the line that we fell in love with and and they will always be like they, they will always have the special place and in our hearts and also that's why the origins line which is like a reissue of the original but like a bit modernized mm -hmm. it's so popular i think yeah yeah i think so you know, people like to to connect with with what they remember from their childhood, and and I think that's what's great about it is that there's something for everyone there. You know, and and like you were saying with the the parts, the masterverse parts, you can easily swap them to create the perfect version of the fit of the characters that you want. You know, and the origins toy line, you know, they have that aspect as well. All those parts are swappable, and you can mix and match, and you can create whatever you want out of them. And it's such a, it's such a neat level of playability that these bring. Yeah, just from swapping, mm -hmm. just from swapping, and then you can add a little coat of paint, or you can uh, rework one uh, one weapon and add it to the other. And yeah, that's that's yeah. Very, very, very nice. Yeah, yeah, it's great. <laughs> um, another one that <laughs> I really like was I took the bike from the man. So this was another aspect. And what I did was the first thing I did was I painted his his armor pieces and his belt so that they kind of had more of a shine to them. Because as they came, it was a very dull yellow color. And so I just added kind of more of a gold, a metallic gold paint just to to highlight yeah. that. And I know it I know it's kind of difficult to see with this camera. Yeah, but, but it's less plastic, like less yeah. obviously plastic and it's uh, it has a, a more um sculpture. Mm -hmm. look yeah. on them right yeah you know and another thing i did with him was i added a i added a cape you know that kind of has where do you find these fantastic capes i love the one you used for queen tila for king Himan, and this so so a lot of them is i i find them from from other action figures you know and i i reconstitute the parts from not you know from existing other uh, existing toy lines so i pull from the marvel legends toy line I pull from the DC Universe toys. Um, basically, if I see something that I think might fit with it, I usually run with it and have fun adapting it to make it fit. And I like capes. I like I like characters. They look amazing on those figures. 
So yeah, they look that, more regal. Yeah, and they just kind of have that extra flair, you know, and, and I like that. One thing that I really like about this figure is I don't know if you can see it, but I added a sheath. Ah, oh, and it fits the sword. sword. Oh wait. And if I you can kind of see wow. how I worked it through his existing armor. Wow. It's kind of a leather look. <laughs> but it works. Sheath for his sword and it works. Yeah, it just fits it perfectly. <laughs> that, it it, it almost looks it almost looks as if it was like sculpted specifically for that figure. Yeah. I'm always yeah. amazed about how the eye that you have to find these other pieces from other toys mm -hmm. to fit exactly your vision. Like oh, it, thank you. I would I would never think about like creating this this the sheath and to fit it with the cape, but it works so well. And it, it really complements the barbarian look. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I, I think that's my my favorite part of customization customization is I'm not very good at painting. I'm not very good at creating, you know, brand new pieces, but I really like I really like the mix and match mix and match aspect of of what kit bashing offers. And and so that's usually what I focus on is I like to find parts that already exist and see if I can incorporate them into my He-Man figures. And that that's a lot of fun for me, you know. So. It's a it's a way of hunting pieces, right? Oh yeah, this yeah. this might work. And it, when yeah, it does. Exactly. Yeah, and, and I also, I my, yeah, I was just gonna say, and then I get to tell my wife, I was like, no, I need, I need these new action figures because I need to steal parts from them to, to fit my human figures. <laughs> and she's like, yeah, that makes sense. She's like, yeah, yeah, I, yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. So, um, another piece that I'm really proud of, uh, this was a collaboration that I did with my, my brother. Uh, he's an artist and he's actually very good at painting, um, and I had this vision that I wanted to create a Tila figure based on how she looks in the 2012 to 2016 DC comics, where she's in what they call her captain of the guard armor and uniform. And it's very much inspired by her father's armor. Um, it's, you know, green and gold armor. And so I wanted a figure based on that. And so I collaborated with my brother and I, I found the existing figure to use as a base figure. And then him and I went through everything and figured out how to paint it and how to make it look the way we wanted. And so this figure was originally a Wonder Woman figure. Um, but as you can see, I repainted her to, wow. match, to match how Tila looks with the red hair and the golden white and the green armor. And obviously she has a cape because like I said, I like capes. <laughs> So this was a really fun one to do, you know, and yeah, it looks amazing. I've seen pictures in your yeah your feed, and yeah, she and like like we said, sometimes um, production uh, of a toy line cannot match all the variants. It's just too expensive. Yeah, and so, but you want a specific variant that appeared in a in a comic. So maybe we will never see that in the regular line. If you want right. it and you want to create it. And it's fun to, to find out first which uh, base figure you're going to use and and then think how what tweaks to make to to fit your vision. And I, I think this one turned out very nice. Thank you. Very Thank nice. You. Yeah, it's one of my favorites. That, and it's it's fairly recent that we finally finished that my brother finally finished with his with his paint applications. And so, yeah, it was a lot of fun. And it it let me spend time with my family member, you know, and that's always it's another just another benefit to it, you wow. know, another connection. And and speaking of which, um I have I have two very special figures here that I'm gonna show. And these aren't ones that I created, these are ones that um a good friend of mine created. And he actually let me bring it up real quick. He gave me Sorry, I just need to find it really quick here. He gave me some uh, some feedback on why he decided to create these figures for me. And so he is very active in in building Lego. Like he goes to competitions. Um, he has an entire room in his basement that is just lined, the walls are lined with shelves where all of his Lego pieces are color-coded and organized so that he can easily find them. 
he has programs on his computer that allows him to make custom custom lego sets and custom figures and what he did for me is he made these figures that are called they're called brick brick heads and he made ah that skeletor so he made me skeletor complete with his own power sword there on he created back. the pattern he created the pattern and built it you know he found all the pieces that he would need and and built his own pattern wow. create these and then, oh, look at that. <laughs> Complete with a sword. Wow. Uh -huh. And he's got a little battle axe. Oh, on his back. wow. So. And I remember that you had those. Uh, he, he borrowed them from you to show yeah, them. So, yeah, he took them to, to one of the competitions that he went to and entered them as, as one of his entries. So. Um, so they were exposed at a convention. At the yeah. Lego convention. That's nice. Yeah. yeah, so it was really neat. But what he said about it was when I asked him about, you know, why why he likes to play with Lego and, and do customization through Lego, you know, and why specifically he chose to, to do He-Man and Skeletor, this is what he has to say. I'll read this real quick. <clears throat> he said, I've always found Lego therapeutic and relaxing. It's a fun way to express my creativity. He says, I chose He-Man and Skeletor because I wanted to find a way to combine both of our hobbies. He says, I know how much you care about these characters, so I wanted to find that same level of, of excitement for them in my own way. These blocky Lego characters are called Brickheads. I enjoy building them because of the challenge presented from trying to make a recognizable character with so few bricks and details. You really have to break the character down to the most basic forms and color, and the results of a good Brickheads character are always so cute. Oh, that's great. And so that, that's so yeah. that's so that's so heartwarming, you know, like yeah. something that he enjoys so much and that you enjoy so much. Oh, that's so cute, yeah. really. And and it was really neat because he surprised me with them. He surprised me with the He Man figure first, because that was the first one that he completed and I didn't know he was doing that for me. You know, and wow. it was just it was a very special moment for me. You know, and I'll I'll share better pictures of these you know, on online so that people can see them and so that they can actually find his profile because he does a lot of really neat work. Um, so yeah, uh, real quickly while we're talking about it and before we get to your to your your customs that, that we're gonna show off, I wanted to to talk about what other people have said regarding why they like to customize. Um, there's a... Uh, a person from uh, Instagram called I am Broman of Eternia. And he does the six scale custom figures. Um, he says, I'm a customizer. I like to kit bash one six scale figures that are Motu inspired. Um, he says, for me, the reason he likes to do it is that he, it's it for him, it's about improving on an idea and making something special and unique. And he says, all customizer has, all customizers have a specific vision in mind when they when they do something, whether you know it's pulling in a character <laughs> variant that they want to see, or if they just want to add their own special flair to it. You know what he says is that all you know all customizers have have that special vision, and so I thought that was neat. And then I thought this point was really interesting. This is from a an Instagram follower named that goes by the name of Carnivus. And he's actually active in the uh, Facebook groups as well. Um, but what he says is he says he customizes figures partially for accuracy when a figure falls short, uh, whether a lacking sculpt or the budget didn't allow for full paintwork, you know, any, any of those factors. He said, or because I like to add more of a personal touch. Um, these modern Motu lines like Masterverse and Origins are fun to customize and they don't cost, they don't cost a lot of money bar a few exclusive or rare items, you know, so we can fit, we can feel a little bit more comfortable trying out these new ideas that we want to try out, knowing that if we mess them up too much, we can easily find a replacement and try again. You know, and I thought that was a really good point, you know, at this point in the game, classics, the classics toy line is fairly expensive. Um, but with Masterverse and Origins, they're affordable you know, and they're easily attainable. And I, and so I thought that was a very good point that he brought up is that it allows people to, to experiment and, 
and figure out how to to customize on their own yeah i think that that's a big that's a big issue that uh, the the cost of the base figures it's not so so high to begin with so if you mess up well well you messed up and you can hide that away and not, <laughs> nothing happens you're not ruining a collective a collection item like or some of these more expensive um uh, sculpts sculptures mm -hmm. or or collect uh, collector items like i don't know if i would mess with the classics if i ever get to I know. God <laughs> one <laughs> because it's like it's it's a, it's it's a bigger commitment right you have to be mm. uh, very skilled or very confident on your customization skills and i i think people have done it i have seen a few but of course that that takes uh, a lot more money and and when you can play around without the risk of like losing a lot of money, that makes mm -hmm. it more easy for you to to try out, yes. right? Like yeah. maybe I'm not I'm not a trained artist. I'm I, I don't have, but I can I can use these cheap materials or not so expensive materials to try and create something like this <laughs> user share that adding this detail that the that the standard line cannot uh, cannot offer, you can you can create something about a bit more sophisticated with this space. I think that's a, that's an interesting approach. Yeah, yeah. I thought that was a very insightful comment. So, well, Maria, I think it's time. I think it's time for you to shine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, like I said, I didn't know if this. Uh, this toy line will be easily available. Still to this day, we have a, a bit of a delay uh, with the figures, about six months delay, and some mm -hmm. are very hard to come by. I'm not collecting them, them all. I'm, I'm basically collecting the He-Man and the Tilas that are coming out. Yeah. And, but I also have the first Evelyn. I love I love that figure, so I... I I had to to have her. I loved Evelyn yeah. in Revelation. Yeah, I didn't care great. much for her before, but yeah, she stole my heart. I think. Yeah, that was a big surprise. And then what I did, I, I love thrifting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I love repurposing and recycling. So I did an Adam figure, which, uh, as I as I thought, if he, if it ever came it came out, uh, it would take a long while. And yeah, it's. A year and a half later, and we still don't have a picture of Adam. Yeah. So what I did was I took a Ken doll that I thrifted. It was in a very bad shape. <laughs> it had the glue uh, sticking out of the hair, uh -huh. and I had to I had to clean it out. I watched a bunch of videos, and then I look. I took um, so I cleaned his head, and then I had a lot of. Um, I'm trying to figure out how to show it that it looks complete on the here. That's amazing. Yeah, the boots. I made the boots from scratch, from felt. And I had a piece of um, velvet laying around. And so from this was an old white t-shirt. I yeah. made his shirt. But the, since the, the it's it's a bit worn out. It's um, softer, and it fits better the purpose. And I made this the belt, and I'm really uh -huh. pleased with how he turned out. So uh, you can see him. So looking at it, it this looks like something that you would find on store shelves, in my opinion. Like this. Thank you. This you did a very good job on this, and I'm very impressed. Yeah. Yeah, like that I'm looks really like happy. an official. Yeah, that looks like an official product to me. Yeah. That's what I. That's what. That's what I was aiming for. That if uh, they, if Mattel made this special edition, mm -hmm. that it would look like this. So, yeah, and you can take out the the belt and all that and the boots. I think the only thing that I bought was this this uh, fabric for the pants because that yeah. strange purple. It's not like <laughs> some, <laughs> something common to have lying around. So yeah, and I love it. I love, oh, that's I love incredible. It. And, but I didn't want him to be alone. No, no, no. He needs her girlfriend, <laughs> his girlfriend. Yes, of That's course. Right. So 
Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, but <laughs> you see, Adam, Adam, Adam's clothing is has its level of complexity. I didn't know I have it in me to make tiny pieces of clothing, but here we are. <laughs> and, oh, that's beautiful. <laughs> but with Tila, I I didn't go for uh for the exact look that she has in any of the of, of the of the series because it's very complex like you see it, it's very complex i'd like if i wanted to recreate this it has a lot of interesting patterns so what i did was to create a dress that was inspired on the look of revelation so here it is it, it, the hair is not just there let me tell you that i have a little trouble <laughs> with her hair we'll talk about the impossible hair but here she is. It's this. She's in a dress. Mm -hmm. She's in a dress. Oh, let me. I'm covering it. And I also did this. You did the arm guards and. Uh huh. And, and now her. she's she's wearing a borrowed crown from another Disney princess, but I will replace it later. And ah, uh, the boots. Look, the boots. They are lovely. I love and then them. and and I, you made those. You made those yourself, right? You crafted those yes, from scratch. From scratch. That's Let's amazing. See. Yeah. So it has a, a revelation inspired look. Like mm -hmm. this piece is it has some similarity to yeah, the that kind of one. that that flared, uh -huh. that flared skirt piece that she wears. Yeah. And the hair, well, I have to to rework it a little bit because like we discussed, uh Tila has the what I call the impossible bun mm -hmm. because I I we have the long possible. hair. <laughs> and that's that's not how a, how a hairdo works. I'm telling you right now. <laughs> so to recreate that, uh, but look, oh how cute they look together! I love them. Look, I am very proud. <laughs> they you they see? look great, and I'm so I'm so happy you, I'm so happy you gave me the honor of of revealing these figures on on this show here. I, I really appreciate that. And I just, I think it's fantastic. Um, can you hold up the Tila figure one more time? I just want to yeah. make a quick comment. Sure. So I, I remember in, in your fan fiction, you described her, you gave her the unofficial title of uh, what was uh, the right. Ruby, the Ruby of the Ruby of Eternia. Yes. And the Ruby I of, think, yeah. Yeah. And I think that, I think this is a good representation of, of the Ruby of Eternia that we know as Tila. I think it's beautiful. And I think you did a very, very good job. And I'm very Thank impressed. I, I <laughs> wish I had that level of, of talent. <laughs> Look at my smile. I'm so proud. <laughs> She's Princess be. Tila. She's Princess Tila, which is a look that we haven't seen, Princess Tila. Right, we haven't. Yeah, we haven't seen her. So... Yeah, we haven't seen her in that in that aspect yet. We've seen Warrior Tila. We finally we finally saw Sorceress yes. Tila. Oh, finally. We, we even we even got Mercenary Tila. We got a new look for her with Revelation yeah. with, with Mercenary Tila, which was amazing. And you, you know, know what? You know. I love that they made this um Sorceress Tila so distinctive because uh, I've seen that Sorceress Tila is just wearing the same outfit that her mother, and mm -hmm. now in Revelation she has uh something that is her own. And yeah. with her hair flowing, I love oh, that beautiful. her hair is is free of flowy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I love yeah. that. I love that look, <laughs> and I'm looking forward for, for that figure. Now that we've seen that they we have uh, the um, sorceress Evelyn and Godling, yeah. mm -hmm. we know for sure that we're gonna get uh, sorceress Tila. Yeah, and yeah. I'm super excited. Yeah, it's very, very nice. So, <laughs> and I used uh, materials that are readily available. Like I said, I thrifted this candle and I bought a generic uh, Barbie, like, and I styled her hair. I'm still trying to work that hair uh, to my liking. It's a bit too bulky for my liking, but it's, it's, it's getting there. It's you know, getting you know, there. What, what I will say, I, I, <laughs> I know that you've been struggling with with the hair, you know, as we've been talking during the past few few months. Um, looking at it now, seeing you reveal her hair done up like that, it looks very nice. You know, I know you have a more critical eye for it because it's something that you're constantly working on. I un I understand that completely, but to my eye, you know, it looks amazing. 
And oh, thank you. In my opinion, I think I think you nailed her hairdo. You nailed that impossible hairdo. <laughs> so it looks good. It looks really good. Yeah. I, I'm so. very I'm very proud. And also, you know what inspired me? Also, it's like uh, some 20 years ago, Mattel had this uh, special <laughs> edition of, of, of Ken's and Barbies for Lord of the Rings. And they're okay. absolutely lovely. And I only got Legolas. And I love that Legolas. It's, it's a Ken doll with long blonde hair and this, uh, this um, beautiful uh, clothing pieces. And that's what I, that's the look that I went for. Like it can be done in that, uh, in that toy line, like yeah. in, in a Barbie and Ken. And since Adam, Revelation Adam, it's uh, a bit uh, thinner than, the, than than he was in filmation and in other mm -hmm. um, series and comics. It, I thought that it would fit better a Ken doll, and it does. And I think, and and that I that's why I'm so so uh, so happy with the end result. Yeah, well, they look fantastic, and thank you. You did a wonderful job. <laughs> thank I'm you. Just, and I, I, <laughs> yeah, and I love see, I love. It's Adam and Tila. I love seeing Adam and Tila together. <laughs> yeah, me too. I they, they they needed to be together. I couldn't have just Adam. They have to be yeah. together. For me, they are meant to be. Uh, yes. And so that was another way for me to 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 show that that yeah. they are my favorite uh, fictional couple mm -hmm. easily. And and I wanted to to I wanted to to have them both right. Yeah. yeah. You want you wanted to celebrate that. Yes. And, yeah. And I think that's I think that's wonderful. <laughs> that's why that's why we do what we do, right? That's why we talk about this so much is because we connect with it and we we feel that affection for it. And Yeah, it's something that is it's been lasting for so yeah. so many so many years, right? In the form of yeah. fiction, in the form of interviews, I, I don't think I I talked about the interviews that I've done yes, in yes. Spanish. Yeah, let, let's talk about that. With the, uh, I'll, I'll I'll let you introduce it. Go ahead. Well, uh, some um, about a, a year ago, maybe no, it was earlier this year, I think. Uh, a friend of mine from Venezuela, she uh, uh, she was able to secure an interview with Ruben Moya who is the voice artist that makes uh, the voice of He-Man and Prince Adam in, in Spanish. And he has this amazing, deep, manly voice to this day. And, and it was such an integral part of, of the franchise. For us, it's, you hear him and instantly you connect that voice with, with He-Man, right? And he was kind enough to... to to give us his time and we had and he told us about a few anecdotes uh, he was very young when he got that role he was in his 20s early 20s oh, i think wow. he was 23 or something but he has already this voice mm -hmm. beautiful if you ever play if you ever look on youtube for uh, uh he-man intro in spanish you will hear how how, how beautiful is his voice and to this day, I um, he still does some promotionals uh, in Spanish for Masters of the Universe the line. And I, I, I think just recently, a few months ago, they had a. I think it was for the Origins toy line. They had a, a commercial, and he he. It, it's like a, if I remember right, it, it's it's kind of like a museum setting where they have toys in glass cases, and he's walking through the glass cases, talking about them. Yes, and that's it, him. It's, yeah, yeah, it's really neat. And, and you it's, got to interview him. Yeah, that was the. I, I was like so proud. That was you can see me like fangirling all the way through the interview in fangirl mode. I even asked him, please uh, send send uh, say hello to Fernanda, please. <laughs> you wanted He Man to say your name. <laughs> yeah, of course, and he did. So I was like this. I was a child. I was five years old. Yeah. all over again you know and also there was it was there was a funny moment because my friend is from venezuela and i'm here in mexico so it was easier for me to call him on the phone so i did and when he, when he picked up the phone the phone and he's 
talking I'm talking to him the first few seconds I was like I'm talking to him and oh my god <laughs> it was it was the strangest feeling but it was adorable moment for me yeah. I was like I didn't know it would have that effect on me like yeah I was five again I'm telling you and uh, and I was telling everyone in in my <laughs> All my friends and family. I just talked to him. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I also <laughs> did, uh, uh, we had an interview with um, a guy that has this uh, toy channel in Spain. He mm -hmm. he has this, the Force the Force magazine. I think it's his channel. Okay. And and he, he made a commentary book on Masters of the Universe in Spain that was oh, wow. uh, published. Yeah. And uh, speaking about the, the history of the line, how it was sold, all the figures and many interesting data. And also we interviewed him for my friend's channel. And, and yeah, we had, we had a blast and you can see like long lasting fans and how this franchise is so relevant. Also in Spain is very big. I've learned. And that he, that's that's where I heard that Cyborg, the movie from Canon okay. Films, was made from the pieces from reworking the script that was meant to be uh, He-Man two, the right. second movie. The, the yeah, the follow up to the to the Dolph Lundgren movie. Exactly, and that mm -hmm. it didn't happen, so they cut out the bu the budget, but they reworked the 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 script i haven't i haven't watched it i want to watch it because there is a character that is meant to be shira like there is a okay. sister or something like that that was original was shira so shira was meant to appear in the right. second yeah the and second I, i've movie. seen I've, I've seen concept art that they made of shira for the movie um but yeah you're right you know that that cyborg film uh jean claude van damme is is the the star of that movie but yeah it's a it's a reconstitute it's reconstituted from the what was supposed to be the masters of the universe two the, yeah so the i want to watch it i want to watch it i didn't know this 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 guy told us and i want to watch it because it's interesting to see it from a point of view when you see oh that's probably what would have uh, been the the second live action yeah that we will never because if we are lucky enough and we finally see that live action movie that has been uh, We're hoping. like <laughs> yeah breaking so many fan dreams for so many years yep. finally happens it's yep. going to be a reboot i think yeah yeah brand new yeah reboot and i'm excited so. about the movie too i think it's going to bring a lot of teen girls to the franchise because well, the, the yeah, the guy is a heartthrob. He's, he's a total heartthrob. <laughs> I mean, I can tell you right now. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah, there's a lot. There's a lot to be excited about, you know. And I, I think we've adequately gushed over how excited we are about, you know, not only Revelation but just about the franchise in general. Like, this is a good time to be a fan, you know. Whether whether people like Revelation or not, I know, I know a lot of people liked it, but I also know that there's plenty of people out there that. It, it wasn't their thing and that's okay you know, but this this is something that that fans can be happy about is that mass of the universe has such a such a resurgence going on right now and that's exciting yeah yeah there are there are a lot of things there's something for every fan i mean you don't have to like everything right. but there is something coming out for you even like vintage art uh, based uh, products um, based on relation, based on CGI, which has some very, very, very nice uh, touches and reworkings of the characters that are very oh, interesting. Oh, yeah. And the Castle Grayskull is amazing yeah, for it's really CGI. Neat. It's really mm -hmm. neat. And so there are plenty of materials. Also, there's this other um, licensing materials uh mondo has amazing figures also sculpts that are just amazing beautiful. they're yeah, beautiful. beautiful yeah i mean this battle cat that came out just recently oh, 
my god, it's fantastic! <laughs> I mean, I, it's I, a, I can't justify spending five hundred dollars on it, but it's it's a work of art. <laughs> it's a work of art. I mean, it's something that if you can display in your in your house, like, and be very proud of the the quality of it. Yeah. If you can spend five hundred, <laughs> yeah. I mean, but there. That's the thing. There is something for every tier of fans mm -hmm. and also for every budget and for every taste. And that's amazing. I don't think I have ever seen such a variety since the 80s. Yeah, I, I would I would argue that I think there might even be more available now than there was probably than there was in the 80s. I mean, I even, finally got, I even finally got a pair of shoes. Oh, for, those know. are amazing. You know? Yeah, I love those. And they like they <laughs> it was sold out like in, I don't know immediately. They were yeah. so hard to come by. Yes, this was a uh, so last last year this time Christmas. Um they went on they went up for sale and I went on and well I told I told my wife about them. I was like I really want these shoes. I'm going to try to get them and she's like okay, you know, and, and so I went online to to try to get them. Once I got to go ahead from her, she's like okay, yeah. Go ahead and try to get them. And I went on and I couldn't get them. They were sold out immediately. But little did I know on Christmas morning, my wife gave me a pair of shoes and she had bought them already knowing that they had already sold out. Wow. It, I remember it, this. It I was, remember this. How did she got a hold of them? I mean, I, yeah. I don't know how she does it. Wow. Wonderful. And so I was very excited. <laughs> yeah. I, I felt... I think I was more excited on Christmas morning than our kids were. <laughs> it felt I got like new uh, shoes. Yeah. And th this is something new that yeah, we haven't had so much variety. And also the the distribution the distribution is uh better now and we can order things online that we that were very limited in the yeah. in that time. I mean Maybe through magazines, but those magazines were not uh, like or mail order was not available from Mexico. So we had what we had here and that's it. And I remember, yeah. for example, with the figures, uh, we had a very limited selection of the mini comics. Like okay. they translated two or three, maybe. And yeah. you had the same with every figure that you purchased. Yeah, they just they just recirculated those same. Yeah few comics two or three i i remember i remember reading like maybe two or three yeah maximum i might be i might be wrong but from what i remember we were like oh will this figure have a different one and no it was just the same i think yeah. maybe shira had the a different one because I, I, I if i remember correctly shira also the pa princesses of power i do have a few figures from that and it had the story uh, of well, the twins, the twins okay. being born and separated. And I think that was the only one for Princesses of Power. That was the only one that we had here translated. And so right now we can get a lot more things to 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 everyone's mm -hmm. taste. I mean, um, I'm going to get an art book. I think that's something that's going to last a, li a lifetime. Yeah, yeah. And so if you're not into toy collecting, you don't have to collect the figures, but there are posters, there are t-shirts, mm -hmm. there are pieces of clothing and many, many other things. Maybe uh, even, a, even an apron. Like you remember yeah, the apron. apron. I love yeah, that apron. one. <laughs> uh -huh. And they have socks. They have those socks yes. that I was shared with you. This showed up. I ordered this. I'd forgotten I ordered this, but it showed up the other day. But it's a little. Oh, it's a, how it's cute. A, it's a Bluetooth speaker. Oh, wow. And there's a He-Man one coming too. I bought both He-Man and Skeletor. <laughs> Got to have them both. Yes. But yeah, but, uh, I mean, there's there's so much there's so much available right now. And man, what a, what a time to be a fan, right? Yeah, and it's it's bad for a wallet, but good for the fan, yeah, right? right. <laughs> for <laughs> exactly. a fan fan hearts. Yeah, I love it. Um, well, is there any 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 wrap up things that you want to talk about, Maria? Anything that we might have missed? Well, enough, nothing that that we missed, but I think that I would like to add that um, 
being in a fandom means enjoying and having fun. And let's not forget that um, I hope, uh, well, my experience is that most of the people is there to have fun and be supportive. There are a few that uh, are not, but um, well, I'm, I, I will uh, put my attention in, in those people who are here to be supported to other fans and how they we are enjoying the fandom in the fandom in many valid ways there are you didn't have to like every aspect or every version of the of motu but let's be supportive and let's keep it uh, mm -hmm. nice and and happy because when you do when you are in a group that it's uh, uh, well moderated you can see the enjoyment like uh, yeah. expand so much it's it's uh it's a beautiful thing to have mm -hmm. and to enjoy in your life like we said there are simple things in life that that we can enjoy in fandom and a fandom is is one of those things and and also i hope that people get some inspiration to share their their work and what they do and try new things. Like I didn't know, uh, I, I, I would uh, make uh, a, an Adhanam Tila out of uh, Barbie dolls, but I did and I'm so glad and I'm so proud and so happy. <laughs> so <laughs> I, I invite you to try new new ways to enjoy the fandom and and share with, with people who, who like similar things. Yes, and I, and I will second. I will second all of that. I think those are very, very good points. So, well, Maria, thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciate it. And it, it, it's so great to finally be able to talk to you. I feel like we've talked to each other for so long through messaging and stuff like that, that it's finally, it's really nice to speak face to face. Yes, yes. Thank you so much for, for having me on your podcast. Uh, mm -hmm. There are so many topics that that we can talk about that you will be talking about for what i know mm -hmm. and i'm excited for this new uh this new outlet for for what you have to say you 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 are a very cons consistent voice in in the fandom and i think uh, many fans uh, like myself appreciate that you have a very leveled um, vision and and also a lot of knowledge that you are very ready to share with the rest of us so i'm really excited of what but you will be sharing in this podcast and i'm happy that it's finally happening yeah. so thank you for having me here absolutely thank you so much and we will definitely i will definitely have you back on because we have a lot to say about a very specific couple that we both love to death yes so if you're okay with it i would love to have you back on for that discussion sure sure i'll be here <laughs> Yes. Okay. <laughs> well, I say let's go ahead and wrap up so we can both go about our day. And this has been this has been a wonderful treat. So thank you. Um, where where can people find you? Where can they find your fan fictions? Where can they find your projects? Please share. Oh, yes. Uh, uh, well, I'm very active in Facebook groups as Maria Dos Lunas. I also uh, post my fanfiction in fanfiction.net and in Wattpad. Uh, also, I have my own web page, which is Maria Dos Lunas. Right now, I have shared a few fanfictions in Spanish, but I will be adding my fanfiction in English for Motu, uh, that now that's been uh, re-edited, and I will be sharing that soon enough. And well, and also, well, I'm here. <laughs> like when when people uh, have me over and to have a good chat about Motu, yeah, that's that's where yeah. you can find me. Thank you. Awesome, and we will provide we will provide links for all of your work um, in the in the video descriptions and on Twitter and on Instagram. Thank you. Um, so we'll make sure people can find you. Um, if you're interested in more content from from myself and from future guests that I'll have, uh, you can find me here at the Dadded Arms YouTube channel. I'm also very active on Twitter. Um, my handle on there is Dadded Arms at Red Pyramid Nine, and then I'm on Instagram at Dadded Arms. And 
so yeah, basically if you just go on and you search Dattered Arms, you'll likely find me. Uh, I take, primarily what I do is I take photos of, of my action figures and that's kind of the bulk of it. So yeah, thank you for, thank you for tuning in. Thank you for spending time with Maria and I. We've enjoyed our discussion and you guys have a great day.